Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to write your for your first disputation. This is one of my first screen captures here, so if there are any horrible problems, let me know and I will fix them or redo this, but basically we're going to just give it a go. So uh, the instructions that I'm using for how to write a disputation are available. They should be on Canvas or Discovery. Uh, they're also on my website, keithbuehler.com slash philosophy. And I uh, have some other resources up there. Um, this is the philosophy portal. And i uh, got some fun things for you to look around at. But if you go to how to succeed in class, I give you sort of an introduction to what philosophy is all about, some encouragement. Philosophy is hard. Just keep swimming. Dory 2 is coming out pretty soon, I think, here. Finding, finding Dory, Finding Nemo 2. How do I get better at writing philosophy papers? These are the resources regarding papers. Okay, so you have to think first, write second. In my classes, we're going to use a disputation format, and you can click a PDF version here. Okay, so how to write a disputation. Disputations prove a thesis. The thesis answers a question. Disputations respectfully summarize your opponent's viewpoint. They state a thesis, provide good arguments for your thesis, and then state reasonable objections to your thesis, and then try to refute those. Disputations are not technically full-blown papers since they don't have an introduction or a conclusion. I hope you actually appreciate that, and it's not just more confusing. I don't want you to write an introduction or a conclusion for these. It's more like the outline of a skeleton or a skeleton of a paper. Here's the example we're going to discuss. To, to, to do the heading for your paper, um, you would follow the instructions on the short video for how to do the formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and do those. So I've got my name, the assignment title, the class, Introduction to Philosophy or Business Ethics or whatever it is, the teacher name, Keith Bueller, and the, the year, the, the semester. I'm also going to do a word count. I'm going to leave that blank until after I get back to it. And I'll go ahead and title my paper. And what I'm requesting is you put your last name and then the, the, the assignment, Smith Disputation 1. The title of the paper is simply the question. The fake question I'm using for this example is, are McDonald's chicken nuggets made of chicken meat? Okay, so I'm going to put that question in there. I'm going to center it, and we're good to go to start actually writing. I like having it in bold there. Um, does McDonald's have an A? I don't think so. Now, uh, I'm going to make the font something formal, um, a serif font. In other words, it just looks like it's nice and formal. Uh, if you want to look up what a serif is, it's a little projection finishing off a stroke or a letter of certain typefaces. It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference to, uh, to the formality of an academic paper. Okay, that's all formatting. So back to the disputation. How do I actually make this work? The question needs an answer. I have to give you good questions that have yes, no answers. Are McDonald's chicken nuggets made of meat? Yes, they are, or no, they're not, or maybe a little bit of both. That's a pretty good question for a disputation. So your thesis, you want to start with, what's, what do I think about this? Do I think yes or no? Um, and then, you know, go ahead and start with the argument section. I think the nuggets are uh, made of chicken meat. Okay, that's going to be my thesis. And for a disputation, the thesis goes in not the first section, but the third section. And that's what's kind of confusing. Um, now I'm going to go back to the beginning and say objections. 
Why would somebody reasonable think that McDonald's chicken nuggets are not made of meat? Well, because there was this whole documentary and this whole kind of an in online e-rumor that went around on the internet saying that they're made of pink chicken goo. So I'm going to say, it seems that McDonald's nuggets are not made of meat because they are made of pink goo. Okay. But on the other hand, I think that they're made of meat. Okay, great. Before we get from the objections to my thesis, there's a transitional piece to this, and that's what I call the appeal to authority. And I actually want you to label these. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cheesy, but you want to flag in the paper with bold and a colon what section you're on, so I know and so you know. Um, now, I've already done the work here to look up. There's a CNBC reporter named Landon Dowdy who went into a McDonald's uh, chicken, uh, you know, factory, <laughs> chicken nugget factory. They don't make chickens, just the nuggets. And she saw them going through the whole process. So here's someone who's an eyewitness. That, that provides them a kind of an authority. So I have an objection. They, they, they look like they're made of meat. But on the other hand, I've got this authority who says they are actually made of chicken. And I, and I side with this person. I think that the McDonald's chicken nuggets are made of meat. Now, what are my arguments? This is the hard part about writing a disputation. You have to argue. I do have some resources for you to look at, um, uh, learning how to argue. It's unfamiliar. My only encouragement to you is that it's supposed to feel hard. It's supposed to be a little bit different. It's supposed to be a little uncomfortable. It's supposed to challenge you. So don't feel panicked if you kind of hit writer's block at this point. Take a break and think about the argument and write down some of your thoughts. So I've already done some of the work here to think about, hmm, um, Mythbusters host did a report inside the Tyson factory and took video footage of the nuggets being made. And even though industrially produced ground chicken looks unappetizing, um, it, it's chicken meat, okay? Um, and even though it's heavily salted and preserved, it's still chicken meat. And even though it may not be healthy and makes you feel terrible, it's still chicken meat. So I, I've given you a few arguments. You know, if, if it was chicken meat, um, then you should be able to go into the factory and see it being made. And indeed, people have done that. Okay, so now I have sections one done. Sections two, I've got the appeal to authority, and I literally want you to quote somebody, an authority, and then I've got my argument. This is really the body of the paper. This is traditionally what the whole paper would be about, but in the disputation, it's, it's the middle, it's the meat of the paper. No pun intended. Section four, reply to objection, okay? Now, I'm going to go back and number. Um, this is just one objection. I could have two or three. Um, and I'm going to take out the numbers here. And so I need to specify, I'm at replying to objection one. I'm, I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to respond to that one, if you will. So, yes, that picture of pink goo um, is not a chicken meat. It's a picture of a boneless lean beef trimmings. Okay, I looked this up. Um, the pink goo is what bologna sausage and so on look like. Um, they they spin it to reduce all the fat, and um, it's pretty awful looking. But anyhow, it's not specifically chicken nuggets. So that's refuting the objection. And if I had more objections, I would have to respond to those. So let's go ahead and put in a second objection. Um, here's a second objection. I got these out of order. Objection two: um, McDonald's chicken nuggets don't have the right texture. They don't. They don't. They may taste like chicken, but they don't feel like chicken. They don't look like chicken. Well, response to that objection is going to be 
that um, the texture is is not like chicken off the bone simply because it's ground chicken. The meat is processed and fried, but it's so it's not like chicken off the bone, but it is chicken. So that's kind of the whole disputation. There's no, this is where you would normally put um, a conclusion, right? Notice it's conspicuously missing. And you would normally have kind of an introduction. Um, you know, philosophy introductions are, are hard to write. Since the dawn of time, man has wondered what is in his chicken. It, no, just skip that and start with literally the words objection one and give me your best shot. So obviously this is kind of a silly example, but it gives you the idea of how the, the, the disputation is supposed to be structured, kind of what you're supposed to do. So look at the actual question that I've assigned to you and ask yourself, first and foremost, what do I think about that? What's my opinion? Do I think yes or no to this question? And secondly, who agrees with me? Um, is there an authority? Basically, the way that I use the questions, there's somebody in our class texts that we're reading that you can cite as an authority. It might be somebody online. It might be somebody that you think is authoritative. Um, it might be somebody in our class texts. Um, it's not so much important who it is as it is that this is a smart person. You're kind of attaching on to them. And then thirdly, what are the objections? What, what, what is a reasonable person? Uh, what would they say in, if they disagreed with you? Not, not, not a crazy person, not a stupid person, but what would someone who's reasonable say when they disagree with you? And then how would I respond to them? So writing these replies, I'll tell you right now, can be really hard. It can take you minutes. It can take you hours. Notice there's not a whole lot of words here. It's just, I mean, if I copy this and using my Google word count, 229 words. Now you have to write a little bit more than that, but still, I just wrote 229 words. It's not that hard to write the words, it's hard to think the thoughts, and that's the point of this assignment. It's an assignment about thinking through the argument. So I hope that helps you to kind of get a sense of this. Look at these resources. You can read about each section, what it's supposed to do, um, and then you can look at the pass fail criteria. You will pass this assignment if you answer the question, if you provide arguments and don't just assert your feelings or assert your opinions. If you, thought, if you provide some reasonable objections, usually one or two or three, for the first disputation, just do one or two, and then for the next ones, do two or three. And um, if you state reasonable objections, you, you will pass. Um, if you respond to them, right, you, then, then you will pass. If you don't respond to your objections, if you just state them and leave them hanging, then you won't pass. If you meet the minimum length requirement, usually 400 or so words for the first one, but, but look at the instructions. And then uh, here's another problem. Some people don't cite any texts, right? So in this one, I didn't cite any text because this is just a made up example, but you would want to cite the semester text, interact in the argument, interact in one of the objections, or interact in the appeal to authority with our semester uh, readings. And this last one, this is the most subjective. Um, I fail papers if they're composed of mostly convoluted, forced, obscure, thesaurus-heavy, pretentious, garbled, or academic BS. And by BS, I mean bureaucratically suitable language. Just speak plainly, speak clearly, um, and say what you're trying to say, and, and you will pass this assignment. It's not, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not trying to make this harder than it needs to be. What I really want you to do is to think through the question and think through your answer and think through the opposing side. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have questions in class or send me an email. Thanks for watching.